It was cool to see a lot of new stuff. This is a bit of an old stuff because this is started soon soon after Go IPFS actually. So I'm going to tell you about IPFS cluster. We will go very quickly uh, over the features and we will see try to explain a little bit of the internals and about about how it uses the Go IPFS stack. I don't think we should call it Kubo stack. Anyway, um, under the hood. So IPFS cluster does data orchestration against a swarm of Kubo demons as a, as a, as a sidecar. So what it does is to select, given a replication factor for a pin, it selects which Kubo demons in your cluster should be the ones pinning, and it tells them to pin it, and then it makes sure they actually pin it. If they don't, it retries, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, the whole idea here was that if you're going to deploy Kubo, you might as well just deploy the IPFS cluster daemon next to it, more or less for the same price in a very similar fashion. It's also a daemon. It's configured more or less in the same way, and you run it more or less in the same way, and you're going to get IPFS coordination on top almost for free. What it does, print, rep print replication, you can also do car imports and IPFS adds, but to multiple Kubo peers at the same time. It's balanced allocations, APIs, I can go a little bit more in detail, but the idea is that every cluster in the, every peer in the cluster has a shared pin set. So they, they are tracking a pin set and all of them have that state between them. And we will see how, how it is coordinated. And every pin in that pin set has several options. Among them, the replication factor. Now they have like origins and things to support the, the pinning services API too. And clusters tracks the, the pin lifetime, telling the IPFS daemon or the Kubo daemon what to do. Um, it does some sort of balanced allocations. So originally, cluster will select allocation based on the on the amount of free space reported by Kubo, but now it's a little bit more elaborate because if you attack your cluster peers right, you will get allocations that you can distribute around the world, and you can say, I want to replicate this pin in three places, but please do it so those three places are not in the same data center and are not in the same availability zone. And once you've selected places that are distributed around the world, please select those peers that do not have very high pinning queues. And once you're dealing with the ones that are more or less not pinning too many things, then please select the ones with most available space. And this is um, user configurable to your needs. It has three APIs that it exposes that can be enabled or disabled. The REST API is the original one, the one that gives access to all the, all the feature set the Binning Services API that we added recently, and the IPFS proxy API, which tends to mimic the IPFS Kubo's um, API. The idea is that you could also drop in a cluster peer in the place where an IPFS uh, Kubo's daemon was before and having a lot of trouble with the rename. And, and it would more or less, if your application was just doing like pin and, and pin RM on, on Kubo, you could just drop in a cluster peer as a, repl as a replacement and get the pin replication uh, for free. Um, we have documentation and that includes a bunch of tips on how to run Kubo and how to run the cluster peers in, in production, particularly recommended settings for bit swap internals, for data stores and, and so on. Um, we also have something called collaborative clusters, which is the idea that you want to distribute a pin set to a number of, of users that are interested through IPFS. And you will create a cluster, but in that cluster you have certain trusted peers, so the ones that can actually edit that pin set. And the rest of the peers that are part of that cluster are just followers and are just dedicated to pinning whatever is on that pin set without actually the power of making changes to it. So this is used, for example, for, for distributing um, 
package repositories. Someone has a collaborative cluster that says, yeah, you can follow this, and by following this cluster, you're going to get the latest pin set that allows you to pin all the packages. Internals. A cluster peer is made of a bunch of components. Um, each cluster peer runs a lp2p host, and all the cluster peers from a private lp2p network. Between themselves, they're going to communicate through an RPC interface. So they're going to have RPC endpoints that they can call on each other. And this allows, for example, if I ask one cluster peer, what is the status of this pin? It doesn't know what is the status on, on, on a pin that is actually stored by some other cluster peer, but it can use the RPC to actually go and ask the other peer, hey, do you have this pin? Or is it still cute, et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, you make that request, and then you come back to the API, to the user request on the API saying, hey, yeah, and this pin is cute there, and it's pinned somewhere else. This also allows us to do like getting blocks on one cluster peer and actually adding them remotely to a different um, Kubo daemon that is managed by a different cluster peer. This is done through, a lp2p, uh, through an RPC library um, on lp 2 p that we wrote. Essentially, we took this, the standard RPC library and made it lp 2 p enabled, and then we added features on top. So now it's not only calling methods and getting a response. We can also do a streaming, so we can pass channels to methods, and we will stream everything on the channel, and then get a channel as a response and stream things out. Um, comes quite handy and works on top of libptp. So since our cluster peers are forming a private libptp network, um, we're now streaming everything on, on that libptp network uh, using, using libptp services for all the communication. Um, the heart of the cluster and of the cluster peers is the consensus component. We used Raft in the past, but today we're using Merkle CRDTs. The idea is that each cluster peer has to agree on what the pin set is, and they all have the ability to update that pin set, uh, sometimes very heavily if they're ingesting many pins at the same time. Therefore, we're using, in order to manage that pin set that is a shared state among all the cluster peers, we're using uh, GoDS CRDT, which is an implementation of Merkle CRDTs. And it's essentially a Merkle DAG, it's a blockchain, except you don't need consensus because all the objects in that blockchain can actually be merged together. So your final state will be the merge of all the nodes in the Merkle DAG. And those nodes essentially have a list of what are the new pins and what are the pins that you're deleting. If you put all of that together, you get the final list of pins that the cluster should be tracking or not. Everything in the end, when you, when you update, you want to add a pin, you will add a new node to that Merkle DAG, and you will, you will broadcast that you have added this node with these CIDs. The rest of the nodes will see the broadcast and will download um, the thing. Everything is stored in a Go data store. Um, of course, that means GoDS CRDT needs an IPLD DAG service, and this is provided by IPFS Lite, which is just a minimal implementation of a DAG service using the Go IPFS stack. The P2P host might plus DHT plus data store plus block store, you wrap it on a cache block store, you wrap it on a Bloom filter enabled block store, you add some bits up to it, you get a block service, you add a reprovider, and now you have a DAG service, fully functional, you can wrap anything from any IPFS network that you want. This is essentially the list of libraries that we use from, from the stacks. Um, in the end, if you noticed, IPFS cluster is a distributed peer-to-peer -peer database with the purpose, just the purpose of coordinating pinning and it's taking advantage of essentially every piece that the, that the Go IPFS stack, which is the, the thing that was mature enough when we were building this and as we were building this, had to offer, and we added the missing pieces. So we added the CRDT part, we added the Go RPC part, um, but all the other pieces facilitated a lot, a lot of the task here because we get pops up for free we get content addressing and the ability to receive blocks from anywhere in the network for free, et cetera, et cetera. So we were just covering small bridges. Pain points. 
being a sidecar, pain points right now. So things that bother me right now, a lot of things bother me in the past, but right now. Being a sidecar to Kubo means you pay, we have to interact with Kubo through, through the API and you, you pay all the price of the API boundary, you pay the price of your Kubo daemon dying and being able to react to that because your cluster daemon can keep running, of course, but now your Kubo daemon is dead or not responding. You cannot hit the, the IPFS data store directly. And there's a lot of, of fighting the limits as we were growing along our folks at NFT storage. Um, there are many limits to fight with, like the total number of pins that the cluster can track, the total number of pins that the cluster can ingest, so how can we ingest faster, um, but also how can we increase the speed as, at which we pin content, and how can we increase the speed at which we add content, and those are, those are different paths, and they have like different solutions and different optimizations. How to maximize performance? What is the right size of a cluster peer when you're, when you're hitting all those limits? What is the right number of parallel pin add calls? What is the right settings for Kubo, for Badger, for the file system in the nodes that you're running, for the layout? What is the right balance between the disk size and the memory? How many nodes do you want to run? How can you optimize and less, run less nodes or not? Um, this is our questions that when you're hitting the limits, they're relatively harder to, to resolve and you have to try, try something else and try to, try to improve. Uh, roadmap, we're working on an IPFS operator for Kubernetes that will deploy IPFS and, and cluster swarms on Kubernetes for the first time in a way that we officially support, so not just something random that someone did, but we want to make sure that this works properly and that you get IPFS Kubo demons that are publicly accessible, that are correctly advertised on the DHT, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to go towards embedding Kubo in the cluster peers, so running, running a, a secondary IPFS host directly in the cluster peer as a way to you know, eliminate that um, API cost that we pay and suddenly you have direct access to the data store and you can do a bunch of other optimization on how you handle pinning, how you handle unpinning potentially, how you handle gar garbage collection, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you very much. If you want to know more about Cluster, uh, you can come to me. And if you want to know much more about Cluster, I'm open to making a specific unconf sessions and so on. I know we have some, some users here. Um, so yeah, thanks.